Welcome to Cooking and Storing with Ann and Wayne. Today we're going to talk about freeze drying squash and zucchini. Our garden this week has been very generous and so we have lots to process. Uh, these are some of the ones that I've done this week, um, but today we're going to do uh, some different methods uh, that will make it more convenient uh, to use them in different recipes. But if you take your processed squash uh, and turn it into a powder, you can add it to soups and stews and people wouldn't even know it was there if you have uh, family members that are not big squash fans. Uh, we're also going to put some through the food processor and turn it into shreds so it's ready to go into our uh, zucchini bread and uh, other baked good goods. Um, so we're going to take some and slice it very thin. I think I've got a jar here somewhere like this one and turn it into chips uh, by adding some ranch powder. So we're going to do some different methods today, um, maybe to give you some ideas of other ways you can use your, your squash and your zucchini. I'm going to run this zucchini that I cut into chunks through the food processor now to turn it into shreds and get it ready to put on our um, trays and get them ready to go into the uh, freeze dryer. If you don't have a uh, food processor, you can just use your box grater for this. It just takes a little longer. get the idea of how we're going to um, get this into the, the shreds. Um, we're going to use this particular um, zucchini in zucchini bread and baking because it's a little older and a little tougher. And this is what our shredded zucchini looks like. It's ready to go on our trays. This is the zucchini that I've taken and sliced on the mandolin to get thin um, slices that are all about you know, the same width because we're going to turn these into zucchini chips with um, just by putting ranch dressing on them and then putting them in the freeze dryer. If you uh, don't have a mandol mandolin, you can just slice it thinly with a uh, just a, a knife. And all you do is take your ranch powder and go uh, a little bit lighter rather than heavy handed with this powder. The first ones I did were so salty you just about couldn't eat them. So um, I would go just enough to get a good coating. I just sprinkle it on there and then just take my hand and uh, work it in a little bit. And then if it doesn't look like enough, then sprinkle on some more. Um, it sticks to it uh, fairly well because there's enough moisture in the zucchini to uh, make it adhere to it. Let's put a little more on. And once we have this seasoned like we want it, uh, we're just going to put it on our trays and put it in the freeze dryer and hopefully we'll have some delicious zucchini chips when it comes out. You can do other flavors as well. This is the only one that I have tried. Um, but there, you know, people put just um, 
garlic salt, onion powder, salt, pepper, you know, just whatever your preference is. Um, we happen to, to really like the flavor of the, the ranch. This is our freeze-dried zucchini powder that I made by taking our freeze-dried zucchini and running it into the uh, food processor briefly and I'll show you how quickly that happens. And as you can see, this is just a nice fluffy powder. So we'll just take our lid off of our zucchini and just dump it into the processor. And just turn it on and let it drip. So our zucchini powder uh, can be used in a variety of ways. Um, you can put it in soups and stews. Um, you can put it in spaghetti sauce. Um, anywhere you use this powder, you're not going to have the, the taste and the texture of the squash, but you'll have the nutritional value by using it. These are our trays of our squash and zucchini. Uh, we have a medium size uh, freeze dryer which will take four trays. I've got three and a half trays of our zucchini and squash and then I finished out the tray with some uh, red pepper that I needed to get in. So we're going to now put the covers on our trays and put them in the deep freeze for uh, a few hours and then they will go into the freeze dryer and the reason you put them in the deep freeze first uh, by getting them uh, frozen before they go into the freeze dryer. It cuts down on the amount of time that it takes to do the freeze drying process. We're ready to load our trays into the freeze dryer now. We came down, we pushed the button, uh, and it gave us the directions to wait 15 minutes to um, let the machine cool down before we loaded our trays. So it's been longer than that. It does not matter if it's longer, but it needs to be at least 15 minutes uh, before you put your trays into uh, the freeze dryer. Our trays, we did pre-freeze them and um, they're good and frozen. So Wayne's gonna hand me the trays. gonna close our door and you want to make sure that it's completely latched so you turn it as far as it will go. Our instructions on our screen says load the trays into the freeze dryer, close drain valve. So I'm going to step over here and close our drain valve. Then it says continue. So we just touch the continue button and now it says it's freezing. So now all we do is go to bed and let it do its thing and we'll come down tomorrow. It's the next day and we're back down to the freeze dryer. Um, we've got the message saying that the process is complete. That's when the machine thinks that it's done. Um, it's not necessarily telling the truth because sometimes you have additional moisture uh, that it has not detected. So we will put our trays on the scale and see how much they weigh and then put two more hours of drying time on the machine, come back down and re-weigh them at that point to see if they're continuing to lose weight. Uh, if they're continuing to lose weight, we'll put an additional two hours of uh, drying time and then repeat the process, come back and re-weigh. 
and we will do that until there's no additional weight loss in the trays. So I'm going to open our valve over here to vent the machine so that we can uh, open the door. Uh, it will equalize the pressure between the machine right. and uh, the room air. The door will pop open when the pressure has equalized. It's kind of cool. There we go. Okay. So what Wayne will do is number the trays uh, on the paper, one, two, three, four, as we take them out and weigh them. I'm feeling to see if I can feel any cool spots on the trays. If there are, that is a definite giveaway that they're not finished. This one does have gold spots. Mm -hmm. on it's a lot cooler. Mm -hmm. 720. And also, when we measure, we're using grams instead of ounces because there's more increments if you measure in grams instead of ounces. So that's why we're doing grams. So now we're going to shut our door and make sure it's completely shut and latched and we will select more dry time it says close please it close your drain valve so we'll, I'll step over here and close the venting valve and just hit continue it'll ask you how much time you want it defaults to two hours and that's usually what we go with when we're going to come back down and reweigh. So we'll let it do its thing for two hours and we'll be back down. Now at this point we have finished our run of squash and zucchini. We uh, have already packaged up most of it and, and stored it away but we want to show you some of what we did get. Uh, this is our regular slices of zucchini that we use for various things. These are the, um, the chips, they're, they're sliced real thin. These are the ones that you saw Ann putting the ranch dressing on. We've also heard that the dry Italian dressing is real popular with people. We haven't tried that, but everybody has their own taste, but it's like eating potato chips with a little bit of flavor. Now this is our yellow squash that we ran. And we've already talked a little about the powdered uh, zucchini, you can do the same thing with the yellow squash. If your family's getting tired of eating zucchini and squash, um, if you powder it, you can add it to just about anything and they'll never know it's there. Now, in this Mylar bag, we have some of our shredded zucchini that we'll be using to make zucchini bread and you can put it in cakes. To make them more moist and as you can see it's almost lighter than the air um, just one word of advice always reconstitute before you add to a uh, recipe because if not um, your moisture uh, ratio to your dry ingredients is going to be all screwed up and i gotta say we had some lasagna a while back that uh and put the uh the powdered zucchini in, you would never know it was there, but yet it still had the nutritional value. So at this point, I'd just like to say thank you for visiting Cooking and Storing with Ann and Wayne. We're wishing you happiness, good food, and safe storing. It's the next day in our, our what's in there? <laughs> Squash. <laughs> Just make something up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, start it. <laughs>